I am so excited to share this information with you. We are in Karuizawa, Japan at the International Turfgrass Research Conference. And when I saw Dr. Ming-Yi Cho from Rutgers University, I told him the paper that you wrote last year about microbial activity is one of the, maybe I think it's the best paper I've read in many, many years. So, and I said, can you please do a video with me and share about it? Yes, of course. Thanks. Um, thanks for uh, having me. Um, okay, so now I'm going to ask you a question. Yep. So the question is, what is this research about that Micah is so excited about? So this study basically is trying to identify if there is disease suppressive soil, which is found in a lot of other crops. So disease suppressive soil is basically a soil where disease can develop but doesn't really develop very well. Or in sometimes uh, the disease doesn't even show up. So we're trying to see if there is a dollar spot disease suppressive soil in turf grass. Um, and if so, what are the management practices, especially for fungicide uh, programs that leads to this disease suppressive soil? So um, we sampled uh, across uh, the Northeast and also the Midwest from eight different golf courses with different levels of fungus applications in the hist uh, back in their history. And then um, from their fairway, so we, we took the uh, soil back to the lab and then do uh, basically like a transplantation of the microbiome into the soil and we developed the uh, creeping bangrass on top of it. And then we inoculate dollar spot to screen how dollar spot develop under those microbiome uh, conditions. Help me out. Just, just so I understand, a microbiome, does that mean bacteria and fungi and nematodes and, and all of the stuff in the soil? What, what is a microbiome? So microbiome is everything you just mentioned, right? So it's uh, bacteria, even virus, uh, anything that is uh, beyond our uh, bare eye, our visual um, analysis. So uh, in this study, we only focus on bacteria and fungi, which is... Uh, uh, there, there's a technology available for other communities, but I'm more trained in those two uh, kingdoms. So, okay, so you have the you transplant the microbiome, and then you grew creeping bent grass. Do you remember the variety of creeping bent grass? And then you said you inoculated with dollar spot. Yeah. So the cultivar we use was pancras, which is a very uh, susceptible to uh, cultivar to dollar spot. And when we uh, the way we inoculate was uh, we grow uh, uh, dollar spot uh, Chloridia jacksonia on right grain and then once they fully colonize we then place the right grain on top, uh, in the middle of the pots. So we've got we've got soils that have a different microbiome that's been transplanted from real golf course fairways and then you inoculate pencross that's growing in these diff soils with different so they got different bacteria. It's the same bacteria that from like the parent fairway or the fungi that came from the parent fairway. And, and then I suppose, well, of course, the reason why it was so amazing is because some of those microbiomes had more dollar spot, if I remember correctly. Yeah, indeed. So we incubate those pots uh, with different microbiomes under disease uh, favorable conditions, so high humidity and then a moderate to warm temperature. And over, uh, we incubate over 20 days and we see the disease peak around 16 days. And then there's very disease development based on where the moderate uh, microbiome came from. So, and then we did a correlation analysis. We found that the golf courses, uh, the microbiome from golf courses that use less fungicide actually correlated very well with uh, less uh, dollar spot development in those pots. And, and so that's what was so exciting because I think a lot of us in the turf grass industry, we'd like to think that maybe if we apply less fungicide, we would have a more diverse soil microbiome that might have some fungi or bacteria or something there that could help to naturally fight against some of the diseases. And I'm just not, it's one thing to just think about something or wish something was the case. And there's another thing to actually measure it. And this is the first paper that I'm aware of in turf grass 
that really documented that. And I just thought it was, it was really an interesting one with really exciting results and very promising results. And, and I think there's a lot of potential for this. Are you doing any follow-up? We're doing a lot of follow-up. So one thing I really have to uh, clarify is for those uh, disease that didn't develop very well, that's we're still talking about 20% of disease, right? So that means they don't develop well. They don't take up 80% uh, like the worst, uh, uh, the, the worst cases are like about 75 to 80%. Right, so there is that natural community that can potentially suppress the disease, but it's sometimes it's not to the extent that um, a lot of the uh, the practitioners want to that standard, right? So we're not we're we're using the word suppress and not the word control. Exactly. Yes. So it's it's you had bigger dollar spot or more dollar spot versus smaller dollar spot. So that's where the suppress is. Exactly. So there's some potential here. There's potential. So we're doing follow-up studies. We yeah, did um, machine learning analysis to try to figure out what microbes in that community actually give those suppressive activities. So we actually uh, isolated out a few of those targets based on our machine learning model. And then we're at, this year, we're actually testing those microbes to inoculate in the fields to see if they can actually suppress dollar spot. All right, everybody, stay tuned. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Micah. Thank you so much. Yes, thanks. That's awesome.